PTZ cameras simply don't get the respect that they deserve. We're gonna discuss who should really be using and considering using these types of cameras, the physical features of these cameras, the software features of the cameras, how to actually set them up, and then also give you a demonstration of the quality that you can get from a PTZ camera. If you're brand new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and let's get started in this video. So who should be considering using a PTZ type of camera? Because let's be honest, there are a lot of different cameras available in the marketplace right now. But one of the major benefits of a PTZ camera is the PTZ part, the ability to pan, tilt, and zoom. So you no longer have a stationary camera. You have a camera that can literally give you a big and wide perspective of any environment that you place it in. And so when it comes to use cases, we really wanna think about who could benefit from that type of feature. And I've had a lot of experiences in a lot of different venues and setups, and what I found are that ministries, conferences, and live streamers can really benefit from this type of camera. So let's dig into each one of these. Now, if you're part of a house of worship, of ministry, or a small church, then you know that sometimes you may have a limited budget and you don't quite have all the equipment that you may desire to pull off the production. In this case, I like to look at tools and equipment that serve a multiple use function or that are just simply easy to use. Using a PTZ camera fits that bill. If you're part of a ministry, in most cases, you don't have the personnel or the budget for your media department to really execute the way your heart's desire is. But that's the benefit of using a PTZ camera because it allows you to really do a lot with a little because you don't need a whole bunch of volunteers. You don't need multiple camera operators. You literally can control multiple PTZ cameras with one person. And you don't need a huge budget for lenses and all types of body frames for your types of camera. Another scenario or situation where PTZ cameras really shine are conferences and venues. Now here on the channel, I've shown you the behind the scenes of me actually setting up PTZ cameras for sporting events and different conferences. And one of the major reasons that I love using PTZ cameras is because they're sturdy. Now, I love my mirrorless cameras. I use my mirrorless cameras here in my home office all the time. But when I'm going out in the field, I do not necessarily want to take them because they can be a little fragile and you definitely need to make sure you handle them with care. So I definitely want to make sure that I take care of them. But with my PTZ cameras, I actually feel that I can move them around and not have to handle with care all the time. Now, I don't plan on dropping a PTZ camera, but I do have more confidence in the fact that they're more sturdy and more reliable. Another benefit of using a PTZ camera is the fact that they have a tremendous zoom. Because a PTZ camera is an all-in-one camera with the body and the lens as one component, I don't have to worry about bringing extra lenses on the go. This particular camera has a 30X optical zoom and an 8X digital zoom. So that means I can set up in the back of a conference room or in the back of a sports stadium, out of sight, out of mind, and still be able to zoom in and not lose any resolution. Now, another group of people that I think can really benefit from a PTZ camera are live streamers someone like myself. If you live stream on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or even Amazon Live like I do, link in the description if you wanna follow me on Amazon, you can allow your audience to see your whole space, the whole behind the scenes. And with the remote or a joystick controller, you can be able to control your camera and not have that stationary, that one static shot image. So with my remote, I can literally adjust the camera that I have in the back of the room and zoom in on this camera and you guys can see that in real time. And I think that's pretty powerful to be able to have a camera that allows you to do that. Now, maybe you have a different scenario. Let me know in the comments below what type of scenario you think would be beneficial for you and this type of camera. Because it is a pan, tilt, and zoom camera, you can actually control all three of those elements 
Using three different methods. Included with the camera is a remote controller. So if you don't want to set up anything else, if you don't want any technical headaches, then you can just use the included controller and all the controls that come along with it to access the menu settings, to set up presets, and to actually move the camera. A second way that I can control this camera is by using a dedicated PTZ controller. Now, the benefit of using a controller is the fact that it's a dedicated device that allows you to not make the mistakes that you may make on a remote. The remote doesn't allow you to really pan as you need to or tilt as you need to. It has one set speed and that's the speed that it's set to. But with the controller, I can actually have some wiggle room on the joystick to actually control it a lot better, along with some other features that allow me to change different settings in the camera just from using the controller, such as the iris and the speed of the pan, tilt, and zoom, the backlight, a little extra benefit of using a controller. Now the actual setup is pretty simple. By using an RS-232 control cable, I can connect directly from my controller to the input of the RS-232 on the camera. So this allows one cable to control the camera. Another benefit of using an IP-based controller is the fact that I don't even need that RS-232 cable. I can simply connect both my camera and my controller to my network using their ethernet connections. By inputting the IP address of my camera into the controller, I now have access to control the camera over my network. Now, a third way to even control your camera is by using the software. Now, this is not one that I particularly recommend, but I do want you to know that it's available to you because there may be a situation where you need to remote into your network or connect to your camera to adjust some settings and know that you can actually control your camera through the software. Now, the same way in which you have multiple ways to control the camera, you actually have multiple ways to set up and connect the camera to your infrastructure, either by using the ethernet connection, by using the SDI connection, or the HDMI connection. You have three different ways that you can transmit your video signal. Now the ethernet and the SDI are gonna be more for your longer distance connections. And the HDI can be used for your shorter distance connection. Now I've been using fiber HDMI cables which allow me to transmit data further and not lose quality. So even in that situation, I can set this camera pretty much anywhere I need to distance wise. So you have multiple ways to not only control the camera, but to set this up as well. Now it's time to get into the software of this camera. Now there are two different ways that you can go through the camera and change all the different settings. The first being the handy dandy remote. The remote will allow you to connect your camera using the HDMI to a monitor and scroll through all the various options that are available for you. Now, if you're just setting up your camera, this is probably the easiest way to get started simply by using the HDMI output on your camera and plugging it into your HDMI input on your monitor, or in my case, I use a video switcher. This will allow me to see the screen of the PTZ camera and go through all the different menu options. The second way that you can go through your menu and change any settings necessary is to set up your camera on your network. So plug in your ethernet cable, connect using the IP address of your camera, and then you can log in using the default credentials. Now each particular camera is different, so if you already own a PTZ camera, make sure that you reach out to the manufacturer or just do a Google search and find the IP address that's default and the admin and password access needed to remotely connect to your camera. And one of the things about these cameras is the fact that they're not the best cameras for low light, but if you adjust the settings correctly, you can definitely compensate for that. So make sure that you change the settings in a low light situation, or even if you're outdoors and it's super bright outside, know that you can change these settings in the menu functions. Now we have our Pursual 30X SDI camera all set up and using it right now. And the benefit of this camera, along with all the others that I've mentioned before, is the fact that you can power this camera over a PoE switch. 
So that means I'm not using the DC power. And this is very beneficial if you're in a location that doesn't have power outlets close by. So now that we have the camera set up, you guys can see that I can control this using my joystick. Panning in, panning out. And then if I need to change any of the settings, I can actually change some, like I mentioned, using the default settings available for me here. I can change the auto white balance. I can change the auto exposure. I can even go wide and tight using this controller right here, which is unique, or use the joystick, which is pretty cool as well. Now that we have the camera all set up, we're currently at its furthest distance away from me zoom wise. But by using the controller, you can see that as I zoom in, we are not losing any resolution on this camera. So you can feel confident by zooming in on your subject and being able to keep that quality image that you desire. Now I also have the software pulled up on my computer. So I'm remoted into my camera through the IP address and I can adjust the brightness levels. So I can take the brightness down if I need to, or I could take it back up. I can change the saturation levels, contrast levels, and I even have the ability to flip and invert the image. So if this particular camera was in a setting using the mount that's included and I needed to flip it upside down, I could easily do so. Now we've discussed who this camera is good for, the hardware features and components, the software features and components, and how to just set this camera up and some of the versatility that allows with the remote and the controller and the web-based application. But if you wanna see how to set up multiple PTZ cameras together, make sure that you click on this next video. And if you have questions, leave those in the comment section below. See you in the next video.